Okay. Now we can get going. One thing that is a helpful thing is don't have dx of dy or the denominator because we've never done that before. That's something that we need to know how to do. So what if we hang on? You could put dx, divide dx out over on the other side. Yeah, divide it, multiply. Multiply, sorry. Okay, so multiply by dx on both sides, you get x dy equals y dx. We want to divide a y on the right. Yeah. Yeah, we want to put the dy and the dx in the numerator. So divide by y and divide by y. Divide by y, we'll also divide by x. So we'll get dy over y equals dx over x. Take the antiderivative. Both sides. Natural log of y equals natural log of x. We will solve for y plus c. Solve for y. Oh, um, e to the that. E to the that. Natural log of x to the c out in front. Yeah, what about e to the natural log of x? E to the natural log of x? Would just be x. Okay. I uh, 
I think the problem purely because problem because the kind of problem it was, I didn't look at part A, so I'm going to say, forget about part A. So we, Wolfram Alpha and all sorts of things, we can sure we can find a way to solve this depression equation. Hmm? A computer algebra system is like a real, real fancy graphic calculator, like the TI Inspire has a well, some schools have it. I mean, like, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a little, like, application of that? Like, your program going on there? No. No, like, a, a, a computer algebra system is not, like, a little program you can install. It's kind of a big thing. Dumb. So the, the Inspire comes with one if you buy the special thing. But there's so many free things on the internet. That I'm sure if you type this in uh, and, and said solve dy over dt, and then put the value of k in there, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1, and solve this, or, or um, anti-differentiate, or, or something. You just give you some kind of solution. Yeah. So that's less than that. And so we'll, we'll just start with b and c. Yeah, A down. So, sometimes the computer algebra system is uh, the only way to solve these things. We can certainly solve them. We can solve them several times. So, like the bird problem, the little baby bird. Yes. It's, like the, uh, it's like Newton's uh, law of cooling. It's like a lot of. Okay. So, uh, if the animal is sold when its weight reaches 800 pounds, find the time of sale for each of the models in part A. So, we're just going to solve. Uh, for each of the problems in part A, or we'll do it for one one of them, and uh, you can apply it to the rest of them. It's, it's going to be the same process with different numbers. Um, so here's what I'm saying: d w d t, the rate at which the weight is changing with respect to time, is equal to 0 0.8. Let's say let's plug that value in for k times 1200 minus w. Okay. You'll notice this number 0.8 is going to kind of tag along and make its way through the problem. And so at 0.9, and so with 1, in the same way. So let's solve this differential equation. How's that going to go? Multiply by dt on both sides. dw equals 0.8 times 1,200 minus w times dt. And then divide by that. That's your mind, by this, okay, you get <laughs> dw over 1200 minus w equals 0.8 dt. Get the antiderivative to both sides. What do we get over here? Does that have a negative dw? Yeah, because you take that, if this is your u, then uh, this isn't quite du until we put a negative there. Because when you take the derivative of u, you get negative dw. So we'll put a negative out in front. So now we have u, or du over u. We get negative what? That's right. About on this side.
Add what? All right, well, I think we all see it coming. So W would be equal to 1,200 plus CE to the negative 0.8E. So there's the general solution where K is equal to 0.8. What if K was equal to 0.9? What do you think this would look like? 0.9 Yeah. We want to maybe make sure that it, if that 0.8 didn't cause any other changes throughout this whole process. No, there it is. It's just 0.8 to K there, there, there. It didn't just, like multiply by anything in any part of this problem. So yeah, we just have 0.9 there. We have 1 there instead of 0.8. Okay, so we, we, we did that for 0.8. Part A, the point A for K. If the animal is sold when the weight is 800 pounds by the time of sale, what represents the time of sale? If I, if I uh, want to find the time t, and I know that the weight is 800, I put 800 there, and I solve t, right, but I don't know what c is. Right? Mm -hmm. you got to know what c is. How do we figure out what c is? What have they told us that it allows us to solve this? Oh, the zero. Um, 60. 60. And zero. And zero. For what? What's zero? T. T is zero, and C is 60. Mm -hmm. W is 60. Okay, W is 60. 60, 1200, plus C is 1200, plus C times E to the zero, right? I thought T is zero and then. So C is equal to negative? years. find the maximum. Oh, yeah. 
derivative set equal to zero. Mm -hmm. The derivative of what in this case? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the derivative it gives you the derivative. The derivative of the weight function, right? There's a weight function, and you want to know the maximum of the weight function. The weight function, you plug in a time. Here it is. Here's the weight function. You plug in a time, and it gives you the weight. Plug in a time, gives you the weight. Plug in the time, gives you the weight. Right? Great. So, <laughs> what's the maximum of that function? Well, we would set it equal, we would take the derivative and set it equal to zero. What's the derivative? It's over there. That's the derivative. That's the derivative for all values of k. No matter what k is, that's the derivative. Okay. Uh, so when we set the derivative equal to zero, so it happens k times 1200 minus w equals zero. Solve for w. Okay, let's say I plug in point eight. What are we going to do with the point eight? How about divide by point eight instead of distribute? If you divide by point eight, it just eliminates the k. If we just divide by k, zero divided by k is still zero. So we get twelve hundred minus w equals zero, and w equals twelve hundred. Twelve hundred.
these chain rules. <laughs> huh? Times dx. That's it. So yes, we were right. It is the natural log of the absolute value of p plus x. In the sense of doing things you're not sure of. Right, Titan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get y by itself here. Oh, we got plus c, right? Oh, man. What? C, e, oh, this is one. C, e to the natural log. Natural log of uh, 2 plus x. So, equals y. Log base 2 of 120, 1023, what's that? Well, 1024 is 10. 1023 is like 9.9. Well, then I'm going to take 2 to that power and I should get 1023. So here, this is saying log base e of 2 plus x. e to some power is 2 plus x. Then I'm going to take e and raise it to the power that gives me 2 plus x. So it should just give me 2 plus x. It's like saying 2 to log base 2 of 1024. Is 1024. Oh, okay. So when the base of the exponent and the base of the logarithm are the same, they undo each other and we just get left with that. Okay. Now we got a 
a differential equation in initial conditions. So first we do like we just did, and then we have an initial condition. We plug the values in, solve for probability C, and then we'll have the, the particular solution. First, you're going to start with this problem. Let's go with square root of x plus square root of y times dy dx. Let's see here. Look at it. to the one half power, and it should be like that as well. It is the power rule. You need power rule on that. You add one to the one half power, you're going to have three halves, and you want to have a, the reciprocal. So then when you multiply three halves by two thirds, take the derivative, you get a one. And then you just get the same thing, except for the negative in front. Well, when it comes to things like this, when it would take, like taking the root of both sides to get y by itself, sometimes it's a little easier to just Write it this way, 2 thirds y to 3 halves plus 2 thirds x to 3 halves equals whatever c is. Because when you go and, and write it as y equals like the square root or something, and then so you're getting plus or minus or something like that. So you can do that, or you can leave it like this. Uh, this is certainly a function that I can plug in something for x and solve for um, and so they get this initial condition of y of 1 equals 4. What does that tell us? Not. This is y is a function of x. y of x equals y. And you plug something in for x, what you get is y. Yeah, so 1 for x and 4 for y. 2 thirds. Times four, three halves plus two <laughs> thirds times one to the three halves. We'll see. Okay. Uh, remember, when we have to the three halves power, we can think of the denominator first. Right? Yeah. Right. So the square root of four is two, and then that raised to the third is it? Two thirds times eight over one plus two thirds times. One equals c of c equals so